<clears throat> All right. Adjust this mic real quick. All right, welcome back. Um, hi, this is Kind of Wolf. Um, kind of signing in here again. We are ready to start our second episode of my playthrough of the Equestria War Mod campaign for Hearts of Iron 4 as the Crystal Empire. Um, to catch you up to speed, if you kind of forgot what I did last time, we started as the Crystal Empire and mostly just worked on building our economy. Um, I was building some military factories as well as trying kind of desperately to, I would say, improve our infrastructure, but I really mean more like just have any infrastructure because it sucks a lot. <laughs> Let's go ahead and do that, actually. Um, we're also trying to work on building our army up a bit because inevitably sometime in 1010 uh, changing lands are going to sweep through and they're almost definitely going to take large swaths of territory so I'd like to be prepared for that um, finally we did a little bit of conspiring <clears throat> as a sort of um, spoiler here but I am doing a somber run. If you're unfamiliar with the show and you're just watching this because you saw a link, I'll explain that in a moment. But essentially, we had some narrative where an unnamed protagonist was getting involved with a cult slash essentially fascist in-group plotting to bring back an ancient evil. Um... They are represented here, or their support for their cause here, by NSP, which is actually short for the National Spirit Party. National Spirit. Yikes. Um, if you're unfamiliar with the show, um, Crystal Empire used to be pretty great, until a guy named Sombra shows up, who just looks... He's basically a Tolkienian villain. He, like, really is. I could go on about that. How he's basically just Morgoth or Sauron. Um... The Alcorn Sisters, the oldest of which is Celestia here, um, van vanquished him and banished not only him, but also this city, the Crystal City, the Imperial Capt Capital, kind of out of time, pushing them out of the time stream for a thousand years. Eventually, they sort of just pop back in. I'm assuming they kind of figured that, like, maybe... If they could get the city back, who knows how that went down. It's kind of vague. Most people had forgotten about it until they just kind of like showed up again. Like, oh, there's a friggin' empire here now. Um, we are, Crystal Empire is, at present, a puppet of Equestria. Princess Miyamori Cadenza was at, is actually Equestrian, and, and her husband was the, was her captain of the guard. So... Yeah, that's caused a little bit of tension. And we'll probably get to where that tension kind of playing out here in a bit. But let's go ahead and start the time. Now, while we do other things, this final act here will only trigger when the Dark Heart has grown. Our conspirators did two things. The crystals, natural crystal deposits outside the city were charged with dark magic sort of just as a laying the groundwork for their resurrection spells and they found a crystal heart which is a rare magical occurrence um actually over here made of what's called umbrum crystal it almost went poorly for them but in the darkness of an old mine they found what they needed and now it's just a matter of time while this was going on <clears throat> the crown cracked down on the communist party which was actually pretty big at one point um which seems to have turned people against the royal family to a degree as a lot of that old communist support became fascist support ah here we have our first event 
One of the many ancient traditions of the crystal pony is celebrating the winter solstice. When the sun is lowest on the horizon and the night is longest. In medieval times, it was an important turn in the season, as it meant that the first half of the harsh crystalline winter was finally over, and that brought every pony hope for a warm spring and the start of the sowing season. The celebration was attended by many crystal ponies and tourists from Equestria, with yet another visit of the Equestrian royalty. Hooray! Oh, sweet, that got us a little bit of stability. That might be useful later. Oh, unpause. Speed up just a little bit. Okay, we could change our government, but do we actually need to do that? Um, is there anything really we can do here that would be useful? I do like that defense, and it's going to be useful for us, so why not? I'll also go ahead and put us to limited conscription because um, it takes a while now for that to mobilize Ooh, guys an event back in the city dust and lake immediately set about fashioning the various crystals into the artifacts that you need it will take roughly one to three months for the dark heart to grow in strength now that we've succeeded we must pass on the news to the leader of our cause so she may prepare the movement across the empire, but not anybody else. We need to be even more careful from now From now on. If the police arrive to search the apartment, we're doomed. We should consider moving to a separate, safer place. So does that change our... Not yet, so we'll, we'll see how that works later. Um... This is a decent little army here, but we're going to need more than that. Substantially more. Unfortunately, I don't exactly have tons of um, anything. You can go ahead and speed that up. <clears throat> I'd like that to be kind of higher, but it's not going to be. So as soon as this ends up, this finishes, I'm going to go ahead and I think I think I go ahead and grab this so we can have it now, so we're not like we don't forget it later. Um, I also am going to invest in this, even though I'm not going to make any or make many for a while, because eventually I'm going to want heavy tanks when I'm you know Sombra and not Crystal Empire as it is now. Um, we're kind of in this lull. There's a lull between one, like 1007, the starting year, and about like mid to late 10, 1008, which is just very, very research wise, you're kind of researching around the edges of stuff you really want. Um, which is fine. That's not, that's not bad. Ah, so we have a timer now for how long the. We have till the heart grows. Now I'm not actually going to like go ahead and start that yet. Let me explain why. The changelings are going to come through here in 1010. They're probably um, going to take. Oh, they're actually close to going to war with Alinea. <clears throat> So that will be happening soon, next like couple of months. That will last, that war will probably only last like uh, two months at the most. Um, Alinea almost always loses terribly, like really easily. Um, once that happens, Chrysalis will go on her pre programmed route towards War with Equestria. That will also include us because we are a puppet of Equestria. But Kind Wolf, you might ask, well, don't we want to be free of them before that happens? Well, you'd think that, wouldn't you? However, I want to use their invasion to help my revolution succeed. As soon as Sombra comes back and takes control, Equestria is it's going to start a civil war. 
Equestria will intervene. If they're not incredibly distracted, they will crush us. They'll outnumber us like three to one. And they'll also be using actual like tanks and stuff. And I'll have basically an equivalent of militia. So if we time this right so that we sp we start a revolution around the same time that they are starting to get pushed back by the changelings and don't let the changelings wipe us out that we we can cons ah, sorry that we can succeed in taking the crystal city holding it and doing away with the rebels so we kind of need a we kind of need her to do well but we also need her not to get much farther than frozen butterfly if she starts getting into western boreas that's going to be a problem because I've got, you know, two cities right here, and that's not going to take any of my, like, um, industrial kind of capability away from me. It will take some of my iron and potentially a lot of my crystals. So I kind of want to avoid that. Right. Let's look at National Focus. Get some extra. That would be nice. Um, extra resources, that extra thing would be nice. I think I'm going to go ahead and do concerns because I would like to get us up to a higher tech level in regards to um, infantry capabilities as soon as physically possible because when I make the switch over to being Sombra, I'm going to have whatever technology, already researched technologies I have when I make that switch. So we need to kind of keep up. Also, by the way, the these just these weapons are so cool. Um, when we actually get to magical weapons, I'll explain what sort of the difference is. Um, I really like magical weapons because they do add quite a bit. I think we might. Hmm. I think that one of these slots is going to go to actually getting us some pegasi because pegasi are basically i'll go ahead and show you um they're special forces and they're pretty good um this is just what it looks like on here <clears throat> the thing i really like about them is that they're they're fast honestly um they're sort of a in-between between infantry and motorized infantry and I like that it's useful should I the game models are a little uncanny valley for me that'll also help us run a little smoother so we just need to hold the line Eventually, I think if if I can get my capabilities running up, I might actually put some bunkers, like fortification, right here, um, just so we can hold it. Because I'm focused on retaining as much of my starting territory as I can. But I also don't want this army to be too big because if it's too strong, I'm gonna have a problem, like you know, fighting it later. What do we got? Uh, promises of peace. So, while we're kind of waiting on that, uh, Vir Virgili is about to kick the bucket here, which happens usually. Let's see what else is going on. We have the Griffin Liberation Army here is still not taking Bridwen, which is ridiculous. This usually they've they've taken it by now. Um, I don't know. They're just having a lot of trouble. I don't know why they're having as much trouble as they are over here. They're only literally only two. 
um, divisions. It looks like one of them is surrounded. Over here, Broadfield has so few. Like, I don't know why it's taking them as long as it is. But they're definitely going to win. Um, if I were playing a communist run through, these guys, I, would, I would probably be pumping, like, stuff into them. Okay. Let's see. Go ahead and grab that Ursa. The Ursa. When this comes through, I will grab me some Pegasi. Or, well, we'll, we'll decide then. What's this? Is there a... Oh, just tell me that there's 28 days left. We also have the Aquilean Revolution here, which is actually not, apparently not doing all that great. That's unusual. Usually, oh, that's weird. Because usually they're, they're doing fantastically, but apparently they're not doing well. Um, I wonder if I can actually send them a lend lease. Nope. Cannot do that. I mean, I assume they'll be fine. It'd be weird if they actually had trouble here. Like, they've taken most of this um, per diem. They've lost this major city right here, which is just baffling. Oh, there we go. Black Rocks finally surrendered, so they can almost definitely finish this fight. Please, God. It's getting kind of embarrassing watching you guys. Yeah, you know, what do we got here? Yeah, it's just weird. Oh, they have significantly less than I thought they did. It's only 7 to 14. They've lost a lot of us. Hmm. I don't know. <clears throat> Broadfield's surprisingly far away from capitulation. Okay. So Aquilea took one of those. That'll free up some of their troops, definitely. I really need more military factories. So I had, um, I was asked to be a little more clear about what's going on when things are happening, um, which I'm perfectly fine with. So there are two kinds of factories in this game, um, civilian factories and military factories. Civilian factories build, well, buildings. They build military factories. They can build more civilian factories. Infrastructure, anti-air stuff, bunkers, naval bases, all kinds of stuff. Um, military factories build, well, military stuff. They build guns, support equipment, various kinds, artillery, tanks, planes, things like that. Um, so, so, like, I have 14 of these civilian factories. Unfortunately, consumer goods, which represents basically the normal economy under our current economic policy, these were spoken for. The ones remaining, I get, which should be 10, I think. Oop. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry, nine, which leaves us with nine. Then we have traded goods. So we can trade away the use of our civilian factories to other countries and turn for strategic resources. So we give them a factory, they give us resources, basically, which also works in our favor, too. Um, they won't for a while. Finally, God. Uh, so we only have eight of these. And we are just about to get another one of these factories in April. Turn this music down just a little bit. The dark heart is ready. Well, that's intimidating. Let me turn this music down just a bit. 
All right. At last, the Umbron Crystal has grown into the Dark Heart. With this, when the moment comes, we will replace the Crystal Heart and bring Sombra Fat. But first, we need to organize Sombra supporters for a revolt. We have only one chance to do this, thus we ought to be thoroughly prepared. I'm going to boost political power there. Okay, so, ooh, military training. How much do I get? Ten. Awesome. Can we do anything with that? Um, no, we cannot. Not really. Actually, we can. I give these guys a artillery brigade, line artillery, so that it will help them be beefier, if you will. So we need to build support. Let me read this because this has been going on for a while. After nearly four years of bloody fighting in the fields of Pruin, the Civil War ended with communist revolutionaries claiming victory. The country was left devastated and it will take many months for the Griffins to rebuild their homeland. The fate of Broadfield Royal, the Broadfield Royal family and the future of the Pruin Griffins is now on claws of Comrade G General Philippe Redglad. The neighbors are worried by this turn of events. This is a really cool artwork. Look at that. It's got like a little... She, they've got like a little um, eye patch. And the way they're carrying it. And it's kind of running through this sort of obviously World War One style thing. That's just cool. So... Hmm. We need ways to build our what you call our so looking at this, I think going down new order where people start to get grumpy about the fact that, you know, Equestria is kind of has the thumb over us. Um decrease harmony, which is nice, but that five percent fascist National focus completed. That five percent fascist will be nice because it'll get us up to twenty six, and we could do probably do anti communist raids again. Maybe I don't know. Regardless, past glory. Oof, I don't want to do that. Actually, let me see if I can do... No. Trying to decide if this is going to destroy my little movement here. Okay, while I'm while I'm kind of thinking that over, um, let's go ahead and do some Pegasus research here. Upgrade these, even though we only have one factory working on them. Um, can we do anything that gives us some factories? 
Yes, but it would require us popping this, which I don't want to do yet. Um, that's going to give me two years of some really nice... Um, benefits so I kind of want to hold off at least for a little while longer oh, give me a second I think hmm. yeah I think I'm going to get the Amethyst University first Kind of hoping that I have some kind of um, events or something. So we'll just we'll just we'll just sort of like keep that on the back burner. In the meantime, See how they're doing. Conquest of Millennia, so that's going to happen pretty soon. And I may put a time skip here. Um, I'm still kind of experimenting with doing this in general. Oh, Aquilian Empire. I mean, sorry, Republic. Got one of the other ones. So what have they got left? Do they have any left? No, looks like they succeeded. As I predicted. For now, let's keep the camera here. Um, so we can kind of <clears throat> see that war when it pops off. gonna happen soon. I'm really curious to see how this plays out now that um, they've sort of added a, a couple of patches because I just I'm dying to know if it does it goes any differently because like I noticed that it went differently significantly between a couple of patches. Namely, um, oh, Vasily Petsushinko, Petsushin, Pant, Vasily Pantsman, elected general secretary. <laughs> it's like this boy, oh, good ginger boy. Come on. Well, actually, you know, I could use, I'm about to get another slot, so I can actually use this to sort of figure out what I'm going to do. Um, hmm. I am going to eventually need these, because mage companies are great. Um, get a little bit of that breakthrough, get a little bit of that, um, organization.
Namely, though, it's recovery. Ooh, I'm going to read this a sec. Namely, though, they, they give you bonuses regarding recovery rate. Recovery rate. And eventually, you can get them to where they do defense. And defense is good. I think it's shield magic. Somewhere around here. Yeah, like, look at that. Mage Company Armor, 25, like, 100,000%. What the fuck? Here's the magic. They, yeah, they, they get armor, basically, eventually, which is nice. Um, anyway. Successful revolution. With the capitulation of the last former vassal, the Aquilean Republic celebrates their victorious revolution. After much bloodshed and many atrocities, the region is once again at peace. Uh, for a little while. With the Republic now firmly in place, the future of the Republic remains uncertain, however, as the temporary alliance of communists and republicans breaks apart in the light of the upcoming first general election. The Aquileans had the world around them now ask questions. I'm sorry. The Aquileans and the world around them now ask themselves what the future holds for the Republic. We shall await the results. I'm curious. Oh, here it is. And we don't have the camera on it. So, the last few times I've played, um, Alineans actually pushed the Solus Mountains never one point. And, like, actually gained some pretty significant ground. Oh, there's that first breakthrough down here in Meat Flow. Looks like they're not so far. I'm kind of curious about... So... This thing can give me some rough idea. 31 to 55. 35 plus 12. So we're probably below them. 11 to 21. So potentially way more manpower. Um, yeah, see? Look at that. Two, two times as much as like the generous estimate. Hmm. I'm a little concerned. I don't know. It's probably too early to be concerned about us keeping up with them, which we do need to do um, to some extent. Look at that little. I love this, like, one dude is just, like, sitting here, like, I guess this is my home now. Just not moving. I, there's probably, like, a, a unit right, right there where we can't see. Yeah, there he is getting that attrition. Oh, it is moving. And we got another. Woo! That's... I don't like that sort of... Um, being green. Having played a campaign with the... Um, uh, Old World Blues mod, I have seen what having green soldiers could do to you, and it is not fun. War preparations against changing lands. Weekly war support. That's interesting. Um, sure, it doesn't seem to actually cost me anything. I'd love to get out of... Oh, we can. So, as soon as we've got that, I'm going to switch to... Hmm, I guess, yeah, par partial mobilization. The Fall of Saqqara. All effective resistance in the Elenian city of Saqqara ended this morning. After changing forces, rushed the city hall and captured the Elenian Saqqaran headquarters. A fire, possibly set by the retreating Millennium forces, ravaged the wooden city, forcing the invading changelings to focus on putting out the fires. The fires are out, but they have dealt a terrible collateral toll and collateral damage in civilian casualties. 
Changeling stations have announced that the Linian government is to blame for the tragedy and that military field hospitals have been set up for the wounded. The Linians are getting desperate. Sounds like it. Though I doubt that they're actually taking care of anybody in those things. So where is the car, anyway? Oh, I guess it's not an actual city on the map. It's just sort of a nameless... Oh, yes it is. Where's that? Oh, shit. They invaded from the sea. That's new. I've not seen them do that before. That's incredibly clever. Damn, they might capitulate them even faster than I've seen them do it. Maybe not. They've lost substantially more troops. Mostly because the so the changelings' main strengths are armor and the fact that they've got these Jaegers, and these Jaegers are fan fucking tastic. They're ta tactically wise, think of them as basically working like Germany did in the thirties. Um Explicitly so, and the fact that they're like very German names for things. Um, and also, they have mobile warfare as sort of their <clears throat> go to doctrine. Gonna keep training them until I can get up to 10, which is probably gonna take a while. Losing more ground here, they might all get all the way to service if they aren't careful. So the last pocket, except for here in Seattle, um, I don't know if it still does, but or if it's just whatever first city they take does that. Seattle used to do a really chilling message where like a lone amateur. Oh, here it is. The veteran front this time looks like maybe. Reports for early this morning fell tell of the changing forces overrunning the Alinean city of Vavafront, which is right here. Um, clearing out the last defenders desperately holding on to the city's port. Hundreds of thousands of Alinean civilians have been pouring out of the city by hoof or by ship, though it was too late for many as changing tanks caught up to them and blocked off every escape route. The city, once a hotspot of radio traffic, now has gone eerily silent, with only celebratory music and speeches being transmitted by the occupying changing forces in the city. Changelings are advancing. And Alinea has been dealt a significant blow. Also, we got our second research slot open. Oh, shit. Have I not been doing these? God damn it. I'm an idiot. I swear I'm not always this dumb. That iron actually might come in useful so hmm nah I kind of want that those bonuses I guess I don't really have to choose frankly I don't know. They usually capitulate kind of early. 
So you might just throw in the towel beforehand. They've already lost some of their most populated areas. Buffalo Chieftain Integration into Equestria. The infamous Buffalo State has existed as an enclave state within Equestria for decades now. Proud Buffalo Chiefs do not did not accept ruining and exploitation of their soil by pony farmers. However, many experts doubted the state was truly independent as they fully relied on equestrian trade. The situation has changed in recent years. As new Buffalo leaders rose to power, Chieftain, I'm sorry, as a new Buffalo leader rose to power, Chief Princess, I'm sorry, Chieftain Strongheart. She was known for her warm attitude towards ponies. As follows, she accepted Princess Celestia's offer of friendship, and today, the integration of the Buffalo State as an autonomous region of Equestria was finished. All Buffaloes are going to achieve full citizenship and farming subsidies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's sort of just, mm-hmm. Stronghorn's a war band. This is just kind of there. So this is where they used to be, and they are gone now. I have the Dragon Tribe is the other one. Um, I just want to show you something. So the Dragon Tribe, the dragons actually have a claim on the Spa Islands, and I think one of these maybe. Let's see. Yeah, on the rad on rad dragon, get it like bad dragon, but it's rad dragon, um, and over here the spy ones. Any of these? Nope. Um, they have exactly one, if I remember correctly. Yes, one, which seems kind of pathetic. But then you read division attack plus five hundred and fifty percent because they're literally fucking. Dragons, non core pony power, which means they can only recruit from places that are cores, basically. Um, which it's just ludicrous. Basically, if you go to war with the dragons and they have any, like, you have to fight any of their units ever, you're just gonna die. Just you're just going to. Oh, we got to 10. Um, kind of looking to help that defense. I really just want to bolster that defense. So I'll actually wait on that for a bit until I can get some mage companies. Actually, go ahead and you guys stop doing that. You know, just eating this country up. She might show you that, you know, for the beginning of this month, these, these lines were more like here. So they've gotten a significant amount of territory in the last month. Taking one of the mo basically taking one of the most populous areas in the country here at Bobber Front, as well as the Mute Flow Naval Base. Which is pretty relevant. Like, <clears throat> so this area is actually vitally important to their to the eventual evasion of Equestria, having played this campaign before. Because guess what? You've got boom, boom right there. You can just stick naval vessels in right here and just invade the shit out of Equestria um, if you build up your your navy early enough. So if you haven't started building up your navy by ten, by this point in a way, then you're just not going to be able to do it. But you could get lucky, and landing in Van Hoover can be pretty devastating to the Equestrians because they're often unable to really effectively respond to that. Oh, there he goes.
I'm assuming we'll probably get a um, event thing here in a bit. Illicit investments. The Changeling War against Illinia did not go on for a very long time. Having no help or backup plan at their side, realizing the defeat is inevitable, King Johan and his ministers declared, decided to peacefully surrender before it was too late, to save the dear nation from unnecessary losses. Changeling forces are going to enter Alinean, the Alinean capital this evening. The population is forced to wave changeling flags and participate in the parade that is going to be held tomorrow. Lovely. So they did it. We are kind of keeping up with them, looks like. As far as just raw like numbers of divisions. Problem is that my divisions are not going to be great. And also a bunch of theirs are probably not gonna be great. Like that's decent. Oh, they've got anti tank, that's new. Yeah, but then you got like these shitheads. Yeah, that's not great. Like these Royal Guard divisions are gonna get crushed. Strasbourg. <laughs> I love the names. I love the creativity. Um, I just want to take a moment here while I'm sort of like just kind of waiting on the inevitable. Um, to really just congratulate the team behind Equestria at War. Like the creativity of this map and the names and the the obvious work put into it is just extraordinary i mean i just over here <clears throat> you have cognates for various um nationalities in europe and they're not just like hand fists i mean some of them are a little hand fists like wing birdie is a little bit it's lombardy um but others are a little less obvious like you have up here let me see if i can find it One of these is actually like closer to Provencal. I think that's how you say it. The um, the minority language in France. It's probably actually one of my favorites over here is Water Towns. Like, what is up with that? I have no idea. Dreams of a Republic. That's interesting. Of course, I could just go with that, but. With the what these peaceful water towns they have like a single division um it's guaranteed by the river federation you have fir tree villages farbrook that's just a cool name farbrook who have this sort of built-in friendship with greenercliff greencliff which is this unexplained random like harmonious changeling hive on this island in the middle of nowhere which is kind of random but it's it's neat like it doesn't have to do anything it's out of the way enough that it's sort of a curiosity that you can come across later and be like oh huh that's cool like the river federation this whole like mutual defense pact i heard some people kind of casually mentioning that maybe they're gonna like balkanize this um which i kind of feel two ways about like, I feel like balkanizing it might kind of lose the coolness of it. But it would also be interesting because they're not... They're supposed to be sort of more loosely in line. So I guess having that represented would be interesting. This isn't... So I've not seen them actually do this where they actually just change color. They're changing colors on me with these. Because um, these are these used to be orange too. People's Republic of Blackrock. Look at that little dude. 
Grand Galloping Gala. The annual ball is held at Canterlot Castle tonight. Royal family, higher ranks of equestrian government, and friends are gathering at the event to enjoy the spring evening and discuss political issues. Fancy drinks and classical music were accompanying it through the night. The ball was ended with splendid firework display. Equestria does not fail to support her traditions. To many ponies, this is an assurance of stability and prolonged peace in good old Equestria. Yeah, that's not going to last for very long. So, here are our favorite Kamiya's Griffins, which is a ludicrous sentence that I just said. Um, this is interesting. Like, they've got some good relations with the towns around them. And those are not necessarily, like, up here. These two right here are not communist. And it's interesting that they would have decent relations with these countries. This one makes sense because they're literally a puppet. But Now, if you've watched the show, like, here's, here's an example of their cleverness here. If you've watched the show, then you know about Griffinstone, right? There it is. Remember that guy, Grandpa Gruff? Yeah, I think pretty sure he shows up in that episode. But look who rules. Guess who leads their harmonist party? It's none other than Gilda. You can't see it from right here, which is a shame. But it's Gilda, actually. So you have stuff like that that fits into the world that kind of makes sense. And then you have those like random what offs like the Barony of Rumair, which is this random couple of islands in the middle of right here, this little lake on the edges of the um, birthplace of all griffins, which is Griffinstone. Still kind of waiting on some stuff, so I guess I'll continue with my little whatever. Um, some of these are kind of like silly. Um, forbidden Jungle, East Forbidden, Tenochtitlan, the random Tenochtitlan. Like, really, guys? But it's cool. Um, so there's a lot of jokes hidden in here. Like, if you look at the names of these seas, it's like Ice. More ice, even more ice, eternal coldness. Okay, this is so I was originally going to do one of these guys. Um, the Dread League is literally it's monsters, it's necromancers, and vampires, and ghouls, and Animated skeletons and all that shit. Um, oh, sorry. I'm trying not to do that. But um, they're holed up in Mage Hold down here, which looks kind of like that, I suppose. And are in this eternal war with the Archerian Order, the Holy Order of Archerus, which seems to be basically like Griffin God. And they have this whole, like, white, the sort of like the walls and the White Walkers kind of thing going on, like in... Um, Game of Thrones of the end. So, like, ominous. <clears throat> ominous. Uh, having played a little bit of that campaign, it is so, gosh, gosh, it is really boring for the first, like, two years of that campaign. Um, as it is now. They're probably going to redo it. But these guys get a lot of volunteers very quickly. And actually taking them... That ward ends up being a lot harder than you expect for, like, 20 against 3. Especially because they have night divisions, and those night divisions are scary. Then you have stuff like New Maryland, which is basically the um, Equestria's colony, colonial answer to Nova Griffonia up here. Which used to be a part of the Griffonian Empire, and like when the Griffonian Empire imploded at last, these guys kind of ended up on their own. Now, there is still a Griffonian Empire, 
kind of. Um, but the old emperor has died, and the new emperor is a child. And even when the old emperor was around, most of the empire had been more or less lost. Oh, here we go. Let me do this real quick. Radio. That's I definitely need the radio. New focus. Um. Yeah, actually, having oil and rubber sounds like a good thing to me. I like that plan. So the empire has fallen, and all that's left of it, essentially, is a couple of vassal states, which, just to show you before I decide what I'm going to research, are just these. There are three of them. Warlords, like, so warlords... A barony, Mad Queen Katarine, the insane, I should say. And the funny thing for me is that she's actually leader of all of these parties. Like, no matter what, she just like flip flop.
Okay, sorry about that. I had to take a slight break to answer a call. All right, let's get the thing back rolling here. Actually, I'm going to make sure I'm still recording first. Okay, I was just making sure I was still recording. All right. So while we sort of wait for the, the inevitable war to come and also for our research to happen and stuff, I guess I could, should sort of talk about this upcoming Changeling Pony War. Um, so the Changelings have a very... Like, this, their whole focus tree is very much about specifically conquering Equestria. Um, they go through United Nation, because this is sort of, I guess, kind of tentatively set towards the end of where... Starting sometime in this season, of where the show is when I'm recording this. Or maybe a little before that. And so... Things are not all that great. You have the thorax, which is the changeling who realized that changelings could have a different way of life and ended up actually physically transforming at at one point. And um, in the lore of this, he's gone back to changing lands and he tried to do some good, but they get a crack down. So you have the thoraxian party is pretty weak. They start out with like almost a fourth of support and once she's consolidated she goes towards some serious like industrial build up you have stuff where you can get some lumber industry which is actually just civilian factories as well as building some infrastructure which is very good um and one of those, by the way, is Mute Flow, which is very useful because it means that you can get more supply through that area. You get Infiltrating Equestria, which can be very helpful, and I'll explain why in a moment. Some things like adding infrastructure, and then building up the actual three other major hives. One that near the coast gives you extra infrastructure and stuff. Vrax, which gives you military factories. Vesopolis, the capital, gives you some infrastructure and civilians, some iron. Modernizing the hives gives you monthly population stuff. Eventually terminating in another research slot. And the resources of Alinea, which gives you a lot of iron. <clears throat> but once Alinea is done being conquered... You get us these four focuses. Working for the front, which gives you those two extra military bases, some air bases, and some infrastructure. And then you get final war preparations and lead the army. This is when we get into the final ta- final countdown territory, where once they hit this, they're going to go here. Once they start on this, we have 210 days until the war comes. That's when we get into crunch time. We start to have to like really actually time shit right um <clears throat> part of this build-up is actually that wildlands and so like wildlands let me show you that real quick um is here and they're actually building up air bases and infrastructure on this border with equestria so that they can better move when i play changelings i tend to focus on getting the infrastructure between Vrax and Vesopolis and over here in a better shape so that I can support larger armies because you kind of need to overwhelm Equestria as quickly as you can. The longer Equestria is in the war, the better they're going to be because they have multiple events that get them just like five or six weak but useful divisions that just appear over here. And that's not good for you if you are relying on numbers alone. So, as you can see, lots of mobile infantry, tanks, the Aegers move a little faster. They want a quick victory. And to do that, you need to have a good supply line. 
go ahead and add him to the army there. A question on the other hand is sort of like doomed to always be on the back foot. I wish they would do this so I could get some extra factories, but whatever. Um, they do have the ability to sort of ramp up their industry here. Like, that's nothing to sneeze at right there. Um, neither is this. But it takes them a while. And by the time they get to there, they're already kind of playing catch up. Most of their really good stuff is over here, and they can't get it until either they are more twenty the twenty percent to surrender progress, to world tension is is more than sixty percent, or they're in a war with somebody who's a major power. So basically, unless the whole world is on fire by the time this great war happens, they can't do this. This is significant because all of their generals suck. All of them do. And their only way of getting generals that don't suck and don't start at absolute worst is to come down these um, trees a bit. And they're not going to be able to do that in a timely manner. Like by the time, like see right there, like boom, boom, boom. Once they've got, gotten all three of these, 14, 35, 49 days. Um, I believe that's 14, 28 days. So yeah, like, I mean, it's basically two months. And two months is a lot. As we saw earlier, two months can mean basically them losing all of this. Which is pretty bad. Uh, don't pause that. Let's make sure. Okay. Let's see what we need here. Um, I definitely need those improved machine tools. Is there anything else I should be using this on, though? Well, what does that look like? Yeah, actually, I think I will go ahead and grab that improved infantry equipment. And come over here. So, mechanization, motorized, mechanized. I think we're going to go ahead and do magical studies so we can get a kind of a leg up on that. It's going to be important later, I think. We're also going to go to partial mobilization. Things are getting a little heated, you know? I also think that I'm going to end this video somewhere like maybe February. 1000, 1009. Um, once we get out of 1008, things are going to start getting a little more interesting. We're going to get a lot of small wars in this area specifically um, as the Griffonian Empire tries to reestablish itself. As you can tell, yes, literally the Griffin Pope is now in charge. Um, and they don't play nice with anybody. As we are going to see. Um, so that's going to be interesting to watch as we're sort of building up a Pope and anti Pope situation over here, which is just such a cool little thing to add, by the way. That you have like the Archon Eros, the seventh is over, Eros seventh is over here, but you also have a different Archon in charge of the Arcanate. So it's like. The guy who's in charge over here is this religious populist kind of whatever is not necessarily in the same boat as his supposed higher ups, which is just interesting like that, that you get that actually shown to you on the map. This is also cool over here, by the way. Um, the Skyfall Federation, Trade Federation, is literally a... Kind of a Hanseatic League, really. Um, they can go a couple of ways. Like they can go towards. They start with the Trade Council, um, but there's there's a there's sort of a, a populist 
undertow of people trying to push the Federation towards something a little less terrible. And they can seriously overreact to it. Vice Chancellor comes in and creates a corporatist state. Um, the Woodpeckers, which is a ridiculous name, but I love it. They can also go um, communist, which they never do. At least I've never seen them do it of their own volition. Well, no, I take the back. I've, I think I've seen them do it once, but I, I wasn't paying attention. And it's like suddenly, oh, there's a they're communist now. So I don't know if that was imposed upon them or not. They can also join with over here uh, the township of Fazera, Fazerin, I think, which is interesting. I like stuff that where you can sort of mold countries together. Um, it was always interesting. These guys actually used to be really cool because they had a focus tree that allowed them to basically become like worshippers of Mar, M-A-A-R, which is more or less the Griffin version of Cthulhu, who is also Satan, um, which is pretty badass. I don't think they can do that anymore, but that's okay because... If I can find them, these guys can do that, actually. Their leader is... After the Emperor dies, their leader kind of goes into a... Um, a coma? I believe it is. If I can see if I can find it here. Yeah. So... They can either go into a like communist revolution under Greyfeather, which they did in this playthrough. They can go to towards a more like democratic sort of path, which is nice. Or the sun never sets on the the sun strikers, who are originally bandits. That's how they got this. They were literally warlords. Um, so they keep going through this they rebuild all the armies doing all this and eventually a, a Riviar Sunstriker falls unconscious and you can pick one of these either pawn of no one he Coma knocks some sense to him he realizes that you know he has to actually deal with shit he can't just do some minor reforms and kind of put band-aids on it. He has to like really clean up shop and does all this. Or the coma leaves him changed. By which we mean he has visions of Griffin Cthulhu Satan and turns his entire country into a crazy cult state. And from there, you have stuff where you can sort of conquering and blah, blah, blah. So that's cool. Don't you know why it's called Whitefall? Um, I don't see any White Falls. Perhaps that's actually one of the... Oh, no, I, I, it's probably explained in the actual playthrough. I'm thinking actually I might do a playthrough of these guys at some point. Not sure about that. Griffonia Republic, I don't know much about them. They kind of seem like... Well, they would be authoritarian Democrat in Kaiser Reich, which is also a good mod you should definitely play. Um, I'll definitely do some Kaiser Reich because I love Kaiser Reich to pieces and I don't need an excuse to play it. Oh, Magical Studies is done. Oh, that was up here. Magical source gains moonlight fashion. Ra racial magic, research time, research time, refinery speed. That's nuclear power, which I'm not really interested in. Research time is nice. I think I'm actually going to go ahead and get mechanization because eventually I'm going to want to do. Um, Coming down here, I'm going to do want to do mechanized infantry at some point. 
And to do that, I'm gonna, well, I shall with this. It'd be nice to have a little bit of a boost to that. This music, by the way, is great. Um, Naysayer, which I don't know anything about. I kind of got off of the fandom's music scene a while back. Um, never really got back on it. I know some of these names like Radio Arc. I know. Um, Radio Arc's got some really great stuff on here. And this is also straight up. This song sounds like something of like Motown funk, which is ridiculously not suited for what I'm doing, but I like it anyway. Um, yeah, just Radio Arc's the only one I think I know. Of course, we're fucking playing Katusha. I do know this one because that is a clever, not a clever pony song, and not a clever pony was my musical hero for a while. <laughs> I love Katusha. It's such a great song. Doctor Dissonance. I know about Doctor Dissonance. He did a whole bunch of, or they actually, guys, I should say, did a whole bunch of um, steampunk themed music way back in the early days. Oh, we have some actual. No, uh, it's David Larson, and these are all just normal. You know what, I kind of want to listen to Starflight Air Escape. My Clever Pony was great. Um, he, they just vanished. And then actually resurfaced. And kind of did a, hey, I'm sorry that I just disappeared off the face of the earth. This is what I've been doing. And it turned out that, like, um, they were actually trans. And sort of came out during that to people who were, had been their fans. And how, like, when they were making that music, like, their life was apparently kind of in shambles and it was really interesting just because I'd kind of almost forgotten about um, really all of that and then suddenly there they are again. This album that this is on, by the way, if you've never listened to it, um, I highly recommend it. Oh, hell yes. It's really good. This is not the best song off of it, though. Um, the new, the new Lunar Republic is the best song off of it, and it's fantastic. Oh, by the way, get it? Hawkland. Ah, ah. It's funny because it's fun. Okay, we are we are in the getting towards the home stretch here. They're working on. They're they're working on their modernization. They'll probably go ahead and do these two next, and then, I guess that this one, they may. I've noticed a pattern where they all they tend to do sort of like go down this way, and then come back and do, over here really quickly, and then they start towards the final countdown. If they continue to do that. We're probably not going to have a war until 1010. I don't know if they always do that or if it's just sort of a probability, a weighted probability, maybe. I have no idea. And as you can see, they've got a lot more troops, so they are putting a lot more on my borders, and I'm not okay with that. I do not like that at all, and I wish they would go away. just waiting for the inevitable here which is not the most exciting thing but this is definitely going to get kind of wild when it when it picks up it's it's going to pick up
From what I can tell, um, I actually have cons- I consulted during that that break, and it looks like the rate or percentage of fascists doesn't actually matter. So I think what we might do is go down one of these. Don't want to have to deal with elections and shit, so I guess I'm going to go down the other one. Uh, there we go. Up to 15. Definitely prefer having 15 over 14. When we get up to 20, that'd be all. before the war breaks out, that'd be real great. I really need military factories. I've done all I could with infrastructure. I probably should have focused more on military factories. That I probably should have prepared them in a little bit more. That was not my finest hour right there. Or you know what I could do that I might do? Oh, we'll go watch that a moment. Um, that's right. Ooh. Come over here and do that military expansions real quick. But we can't do that one. Can't do that one, but we can do this one, which will give us two more factories. That would be awesome. And once the war actually triggers, we can just stay in it for like 70 days. Um, see, this is why I, I kind of want. Okay, hold on. Recently, we've been visited by merchants from the city of Skyfall, bearing various luxury goods, most notably cigars and whiskey. Um, apparently, they have been sent to negotiate a trade deal on behalf of their new government. How do we respond? Why not? They seem nice enough, and we don't need their degeneracy here. I'm actually a fan of both of those things myself, personally. Um, so what they would do is give us some, free up some more factory space. Um... It's going to lose a little bit of punny power and political power that I can afford to lose. Projection efficiency caps cap goes up, which I'm pretty okay with. Um, sure, why not? The costs there are pretty minor, so I'm fine with that. Oh, nine more days. Okay, our town, as also known as Starlight Village, is a place in most the most northern part of Equestria, locked between the Griffin Colony and Stalingrad, commonly known for being magically enslaved by Starlight Glimmer, forcing the population to go up their special talents. Starlight left the place several years ago, but the town was left uncontrolled, and due to its location, Equestria didn't have a chance to claim it. Ponies of the region adopted socialism, based on the example of their neighbor Stalingrad, and all the years since Starlight Retreat, the region was formally under protection of the Stalingrad Republic. There were warm debates, that should be heated debates, I think, in Stalingrad, in the Stalingrad Soviet, on whether or not Stalingrad can afford a joining, a joining our town to their state. But since the election of a silly pen, pants man, it became clear that the fate of Starlight Country is doomed. Yesterday, the ponies our town became rightful, blah, blah, blah. Oh, I can't read that. Guys, fix that. Um, basically, our town is in the season opener, one of the seasons. And so ponies have this thing called a special talent. And they have a thing called a cutie mark, which is on their flank. It's their weird little butt tattoo. Um, the point of the weird little butt tattoo is it's actually a symbol of more or less like who they are like it's a symbol of like who like what makes them unique and special as a person which really appeals i feel like that really appeals to uh millennials they're like here's your purpose um her whole thing was that that's inherently bad because it 
sort of pigeonholes you partially because I feel like that was based off a really dumb interpretation of what it, the whole concept is. And because she's really just bitter and jealous and she takes them all away. So that's Starlight Country. Not that it exists anymore because they gobbled it up at last. Ooh. That's interesting. Stalingrad is guaranteed your independence of Democratic Republic of Pingland. So this earlier, these guys were fascists. They are now not fascists. I just want you to look at them. Look at that. Look at that. That's that's amazing. Um, Arctis Communist K Party. I can't read that. Um, their fascist. The fascist party is the Frozen Throne, which is way more badass, frankly. Um. So apparently, there's there's some other mentions and stuff that kind of implies the penguins used to have a mighty empire in the north, but that was like forever ago. Um, nowadays, they just they don't have much. They're kind of on the fringes here, and their army isn't exactly big. Um, I've never seen them be an important player, but I feel like they could be, potentially, if they had allies, which Stalingrad's right here. And Stalingrad has a lot of, a buttload of troops. Together, they easily outnumber Nova Grafonia, and they could probably take them if they did it together. So, when I do find you a Stalingrad playthrough, that's definitely going to be a thing that I do. Um, infecting this world of communism is going to be a really fun playthrough. I just like and feel it in my bones. So form a coalition government. Huh. That's interesting. So if you ever wondered where the um, zebras come in, we have them sort of over here. Stripe port makes me think that maybe this is also kind of a mixed place because it says Griffin's here. And Griffin's here, but like Stripeport. As well as the fact that the explicitly Zebra Nation does have a claim there and there. Uh, makes me think it's probably a mixed population. But there they are. They are. I cannot pronounce that. I'm not even going to try. Pirates. Yeah, they're, they're actually pirates, which is amazing. Um, and apparently they raid... And they are slavers. Also, apparently, they have war goals over here. Both of them do. Against these dear dudes. Southern Reich. Nice. Um, so I'm curious if that ever happens. What, what's going to end up happening over there. But that probably now is not going to trigger for a while. Okay, so we're going to do a bunch of things at once. I think we should go ahead and do Disperse Industry 2. That's pretty important. Um, over here, I think we're going to pick up... Hmm, what do we need to pick up? We're in 1009, so I think we're going to go ahead and pick up Support Weapons, yeah. And then this one's going to go eventually, and I guess... I. Mm, no, that's too much. 2009. I think I'm probably going to pick up Mage Company over here. Go ahead and get that rolling. So, what I decided again, Mage Company and. Oh, oh shit. I just forgot what I was doing those. I need to go ahead and do that really quickly. Also, we got another factor. Where do we need to put this, baby? I am thinking we need to put this over here. I need to make more tanks. How much do these... Mm. Can 
make this a little No, I still need to mess with that right now. Is there anywhere where I can take away something? Yeah, I think I'm going to take away it from up here and put this over here. National focus set. Definitely need to go ahead and grab military expansions. Research slots available. But I mean... That one will go towards artillery, which is very important. Sunburst. Oh, I love him. I just love this little part of the world. This is just interesting. Oh, where's that coming from? Oh, what's going on here? Oh, the Yale Bandits. That's right. Um, not that they're around much anymore. Um, these fuckers are almost gone. So it looks like they're the only ones who are resisted. All the other ones, all the other vassals have just fallen in line. So Griffonian empires make them great again, I guess. They're still like really behind though, if you look at this, compared to the other superpowers. Like, this looks great, but 12 of the 14 factories is not amazing. However, one good thing they have going for them is that there's a bunch of tinier ones here that they can grab factories for relatively low cost, by which I mean the cost in lives. Without having to spend tons and tons of manpower, they can get their hands on pretty de decent industrial base. And that's kind of their whole shtick is um, making the empire a thing again. Go ahead and add a unit. Hmm. There we go. How long does that take? Yeah. I'll grab it with Mage Company. Mage Company slot then. Ah, I just don't like this matchup over here. Like this thing is telling me that this plan is good. And that uh, there's an inferior enemy, but I'm just looking at this and I'm like, yeah. What do we got over here? Don't like those infiltrator companies. I don't like these tank. That tank is it only one tank division? It is only one tank division. That's interesting. Why is their attrition so bad? I mean, well, part I, I guess I guess it's because like there's no infra fucking infrastructure here. I may actually be able to. Do well with this. Are they a train or something? What on earth? I have no idea why they are all like this. I guess they're training. Let me turn on 3D. Let's turn on 3D um, units so we can see if that's what they're doing. Yeah, they are. They're training. Are they up training up here? No, they're just, they just suck, I guess. Oh, that guy is. Uh, I would train, but I actually kind of need to stop pile. Oh, military training. Did I take... 
Yeah, I did. Defensive doctrine. Yeah, that makes sense for him. I don't suppose she has any. Oh, Skirmisher's nice. Are there any better commanders I could put in that slot? So her bonus is that she's giving this army right now. Our uh, supply, which is nice. The attack five, defense fifteen. So recovery rate would be better, and so would division defense. Yeah, honestly. Yeah, this might actually be a better choice. Cloudy. <laughs> All right, so I think I'm going to do a little bit more research here. And once that's done, I think I'll wrap this episode up. Sorry that these two first beginning episodes have not been super, super like adventurous. But trust me when I tell you that, that that's coming. Um, I've never seen them go beyond like mid-1010 before initiating the Great War. So it is definitely on its way. get well okay so I definitely need to have that These, um, the good thing about magic weapons, by the way, is specific, specifically piercing. Um, let's see, defense 25, soft attack 11, piercing 6, go up here, and defense 22, soft attack 6, piercing 4. So it's like substantially better, and also you get a little more on the piercing side they use they also use different um resources mm, yeah i'll wait a bit a little more on that so i'll go over there how are we keeping up with the joneses though so it looks like equestria has 60 divisions we have 15, so that's 75 in total. There's anywhere from 31 to 81. That we know of on our collective borders, they have 13, 25, that's 38, 40, 52 are our collective borders. So at the moment, they actually, we actually outnumber them on the border specifically. But as they probably have some up here, they probably have some over here that I cannot see. Because, like, right here, you know, these guys are on kind of the crux, the juxtaposition of the Darty borders, whatever that word would be. It's not juxtaposition. I'll think of it later, and I'll feel terrible about myself. Um, so, if we guess there's... So, they have... 
Hold on, let me do that count again. 25, 39. So about 50, 50, 52 or so. So 52 or so. Um, we add about four. It's four gets them to 60. Yeah, I, I think it's not unreasonable that they would have about eight spread between these two. Um, so it's about 60. But how much of that is better? Well, probably most of it. Over here, tank divisions are three and five. Theirs are three and four. Tank divisions are probably... Yeah, their tank divisions are bettered on the defense. And they also have doctrinal stuff that helps their tanks out that will not help equestrian tanks out. They don't actually need to overwhelm in numbers. They just need to be able to get that initial push. Changelers are never going to outnumber as far as numbers go. They're just never going to. Um, what they can do is make every bit of ground its own struggle. Equestrians are kind of hoping that the changelings bite off too much at one time and choke themselves to death. Changelings are kind of hoping that Equestria crumbles and isn't able to hold on for the first year of the war and just loses like basically all of this. Because if, if, the, if the front lines get back to here, then Equestria is kind of fucked because they've lost... They will, they will lose Lost Pegasus if they haven't already. They might lose Minnesota, specifically Minneapolis, which would be a huge loss. And also, like, Canada is right here. And that is 50 points. Losing Canterlot is something that they sometimes can't recover from. This is also like where a lot of their, like, look at all that. Five military factories. Just there alone. Civilian factory. Over here, you've got civilian factories and military factories. Civilian and military factories. Civilian and military factory. They're going to lose a lot of stuff, basically. What I'm, what I'm trying to say is that, like, it's it's something that they probably can't come back from. Hell yes. Let's get those factories on those open fields. What are you guys doing over here? What you need to be doing? That. That's what you need to be doing right there. Increase the presence in the Crystal Empire. That would be nice. Please do that. Please. Flocks. Which, I guess this is probably a good point in time for me to say. I don't know if I've talked about this yet, but I like that they have a tree that actually help, lets Equestria choose to help out the Crystal Empire by building factories in the Crystal Empire. Um, it's just it's, it's interesting to me. So it's, you're directly sort of investing in your protectorate in order to make it stronger so that it can hold its own way in the war, which is... Kind of a cool idea. Like I, I like that. That was an interesting decision. And it. Oh, here we go. Oh, you know what? I should be making shit. I should be making Pegasus. God damn it! I forgot to make these dudes. Ah, oh, I'm an idiot. Okay. While we're here, though. While we're here, Mage Company. Oh, hold on, Let me do that. Let's look actually what Mage, adding Mage Company does. So it gives a big boost in defense. Gives us a bunch of breakthrough. Um, pretty decent soft attack. Pretty decent heart attack. Um, some nice, a little bit of extra piercing. 
mage companies are good. If you if you can have mage companies, you, you should have mage companies. Um, while we're here, go ahead and add mage companies over here, as well as recon. Should I do... Yeah, I should give them support artillery. Probably give them recon actually. Mobile defense. Magical infantry, which I should start making soonish. Sorry. So let's see. What do you want? Integrated or dispersed? Integrated support is going to give our support companies better. Dispersed support is going to give our line artillery better. Um, yeah, I'm thinking over here. Integrated support. Let's also go ahead and train an armored division. Get that get that rolling now that we've we're gonna have tanks enough to do it soon. Um, really ramping up here as you can see. And nervously checking. So they're gonna waste some time. Oh, border conflict. I <coughs> excuse me. If I remember correctly, I think they added these in the um, the Chinese focused Chinese Civil War focused um, DLC. They're weird. I'm I'm not really used to them yet. They're an interesting way to get some minor um, boosts and also military experience. Without actually, you know, having to fight a war, and uh, I think I think it's actually a better rate than, um, yeah, that's not gonna fly. Um, I think it's actually at a better rate than training does. How are we doing over here? So we're about to do like one of those a day. So we're doing one of these a day. So it's going to take us 66 more days to be able to make one of them. Make a single tank brigade. I mean tank division. Good on. Artillery, we are we are literally just kind of breaking even on because we're training though. Um, So we, we're about to get two of those factories. 
and then we'll also get a third one in August, which will be nice. So we have two of those factors. Where should we put those? Okay, one's definitely got to come here. One here, and mm, actually, I might put one here and one here to sort of boost that production until 10-10, then turn around and then put them on here. Or you know what I could do? Not the best idea I've ever had right now, but I am really, really stretched thin in regards to my capabilities to produce new things. Okay, we're all we're all up to um, trained at least. So I'll stop doing that, which will have a pretty positive effect on our balance, our logistical balance here. Dun, dun. Is that see? A long day in winter, chaos consumed the Griffin colony. As today, on a warm summer day, Governor Teafeather was shot upon the stairs of his manor. Unfortunately, the assailant managed to escape before the police could arrive, and without a scapegoat to blame, the Griffins turned on each other. The long-standing tensions between the communists, the harmonists, and the fascists exploded and the streets ran red, red with Griffin blood. By the time the military and police force managed to restore some semblance of order to the country, thousands of Griffins lay dead. After a long and bloody day, every Griffin has but one simple question. What happens next? They're having a bad day today. Colonial administration. The Skyhawks. What is that all about? So it looks like they're about to get into their... Um, focuses where they can do either democracy prevails which can make them go communist or fascist or I'm sorry communist actually can do all three um, or they can do high heels coup a military junta takes power not aligned um, and they end up with the new empire or Sweet, we'll do that in a second. Or you actually do a this referendum, and whoop, you can go actually go fascist anyway. National focus. Okay, is there anything any other one on here that we can get that actually can boost our? That is going to be interesting. <clears throat> that will be interesting to get later. Um, actually, I think we're going to do this. So two, one here, and one here. This is going to trigger with 42 days. So between 42 and 45 days is when we're going to get that. For here, they're working on modernizing the hives. I know studies, no Griffonia. Well, I never did figure out what the Skyhawks were. Yep, 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 yep. Oh, so they get basically new, new units. That's interesting. Begin the stabilization. I'm curious which way they're going to go. The last few times I played, they actually ended up going fascist one way or another and becoming Nova Grafonia. <clears throat> oh, which they are no, 
No, not ever. I'm sorry. They became the Western Griffonian Empire. <clears throat> I wonder if the, the original Griffonian Empire has to fall for them to do that, though. I don't know. Oh, so I got some support here. Um, I'm a fan of logistics. Sweet. So we're almost, we've almost caught up with that. And the rest of that will be surplus. It's going to take us a little bit more, but 10 a day, 185. So this should take us only about less than a month. Nice. Fill our needs in 16 days. And then, of course, we've got to keep making them, like a lot of them. That's fine. Once we can get all of our mage companies that are already integrated, yeah, it looks like all of our mage companies are, that are integrated um, have what they need. So that's kind of the main priority. I think I could do, go ahead and do the past glory thing. Um, get right up to the beginning of that and then call it for this one. So I will tell you that when I've done changing what I, the changing lands, what I actually did was I began my my first rule campaign was actually up here against the polar bears. Um, because they, they have like one division or two divisions. Like, they're not all that well defended. And really, mostly it's because they do have a little bit of population here, which adds on, like at most, like a couple hundred. Like, even their recruitable population there is only a few thousand. Um, but this was the port I really wanted, specifically because of tungsten and iron it's a nice little cushion and if people need to trade they will probably trade with you oh what kind of you you're just a normal infantry dude <sighs> oh, sorry about that I'm gonna cool it on making Two those at a time for a little bit. Okay, what are we going to put in the slot? I am liking defense. We're gonna do shield magic focus. It also fits actually canonically, like it's, it's nice and fluffy. Because, um, oh, there he is. Field Marshal Shining Armor's like magical specialty is actually shield magic, shield magic. So that makes sense. It's reasonable. August. I don't know what to use this on. I 
Oh, it looks like we're in the green final and everything. I'll scale down this a bit and actually um, <clears throat> put one here. Change our government. Is there anything we want to change, really? Ten five five. Ah, so it looks like we actually can't do those until later. Hmm. So actually, go ahead and putting those in would not help us because they're just going to lose them. So let's look at defense theorist. Infantry division defense. Ooh, that's nice. Army regrouping. Division recovery rate. There you go. As a little bit of a reminder, the reason why I'm kind of focusing on 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 defense right now is that I really need to not lose ground against the changelings. If nothing else, I need. It, it would be awesome if I could actually push them back, because if I can push them back a little bit and then trigger the civil war, it puts more distance between their army and mine, which means I can take more territory and be in a better position to fight them quicker. Um, it also means that I, it's easier for me to cut them off from their supply and maybe not even have to deal with them that much. It'll also mean that equestrian changelings will fight each other more and they'll have, cause they'll start pouring in here and just generally, I, I want there to be as much chaos here as possible. I need this to continue for a long time. Communism is banned in Wingbridge. Did we miss Bicolini rising to power? No, because there he is. Bicolini. Ha. Get it? Because he's Mussolini. But he's but he has a beat. That's 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 the joke. So this is one of my favorite here, Principality and People, and you have Lady Maximiliana. Yeah. It's interesting to me because it's Falcor Principality, but Falcor is not in it. <clears throat> Death of Griffonian democracy. Not long ago, Governor T. Feather was assassinated. A provisional government was formed in the winter until the country could stabilize. The goal of the government was to eventually give way to a democratic election. However, it seems that such an election should not be happening anytime soon. As a day ago, as of a day ago, Field Marshal High Hill marched upon the governmental palace at the front of a column of soldiers and proceeded to dissolve the provisional government. Gravonia's future now rests in High Hill's claws. So, Nova Grafonia has a military junta now. Huh. So, past glory. Actually, gonna go ahead and save here. Okay, and that is gonna be it for this second episode. Um, didn't do a lot of fighting, but we will definitely start doing that within the next six months for real game time, I think. Um, that's it for me, and I'll see you guys later.